and six. Hello and welcome back to the GG League uh, number one. This is going to be the second game of best of three between Oslinky Gaming as well as Goomba Gaming. Now, Oslinky Gaming were able to take game one fairly convincingly. They turtled that and got their Ember Spirit absolutely huge. And their high ground defense was pretty much just an iron wall in front of Goomba, or in front of Goomba Gaming. They weren't able to... Uh, seal the deal. They were able to get one racks fairly early, but well played by OSG in the end. Um, other than that, I'm Grendis V, and I'll be your main caster here on Heffler TV One, and I'll be joined again by Glenn. How are you doing? Hey, I'm fine. That last game was pretty intense, and you know what? Gumba Gaming picking up this Brewmaster might actually be a little bit of a turnaround with this game. He is one of the most played heroes. Yeah, definitely. A little bit different as far as bands are concerned. OSG, uh, Similar to last game, we're going to have a first ban out Batrider as well as Doom on the team that had a uh, second pick, so no big surprises there. But on the side of Goomba Gaming, we have the Lycanthrope as well as the Slark banned out. Now, these two bands are completely different, and Goomba Gaming are going to have the Brewmaster available to them, and will be all too happy to pick that one up. They're not feeling that Osliki Gaming are going to go for this Tinker, and, well, I think they're probably correct in um, thinking so, uh, as Tinker on the dire side is definitely a little... Uh, less strong without access to those uh, jungle camps on the side of the mid lane as well as on the ancients. You can safe lane him and it might be a pickup for Oslicky Gaming. Um, we'll just have to see. They are eating their bonus time a little bit. Yeah, you know what will actually surprise me if OSG don't go for the same strat of building an AoE team. They have done a lot of AoE teams uh, in their past games and why pass out on a winning strategy? Yeah, if it's not broke, don't fix it. Well, OSG are just going to wait this out for now, and Brewmaster is decently good against those teamfight uh, lineups. You can uh, get the jump on them first, but OSG are going to go ahead and pick up the Earthshaker yet again. A support that did very well for them, the Fissure Blocks early were on point, and then later on we had several very good Echo Slams. Although we didn't see the full 5-on-5 five -five engagements very often for us, Licky Gaming, they are going to go for their supporting duo yet again these first two picks. Yeah, is is. Very easy to tell what they're trying to achieve here. They are just going to go for exactly the same AoE type of strategy. Um, I'm actually surprised Goomba passed out on the Lycan. Uh, I know he was... I mean, as a first ban, I don't think Ozlicky Gaming would have picked him in the first place, especially after last game. Um, so I'm not quite sure what they were thinking there. I mean, he he is a viable ban, but given the circumstances, I don't think Ozlicky Gaming would have picked him up anyway. Mm, I wouldn't be too sure about that. Oslicky Gaming are on the dire side, and you saw last game how many times they were able to get the, that Roshan. I believe it was three early on, and that's really what kept uh, Goomba Gaming in the game for so long, was the ability to back off and get the Roshan to help them try to win the team fights. In the end, it didn't work out for them, but still, I think Lycan on Dire is still a solid ban. But yeah, as you said earlier, Oslicky Gaming... Yeah, I'd expect in the second stage an Ember Spirit ban coming out from uh, Goomba Gaming not wanting to deal with that yet again. Um, I don't know, maybe they ban out the Magnus instead, just more worried about that other big AoE ultimate. And that was really what made that Ember Spirit work. He was able to come online very quickly. All he had was like a Battle Fury as well as the Empower early on. And he was able to farm so quickly. And then when he joined team fights, the cleave damage was absolutely insane. And, well, there you go. That answers that. Ember Spirit banned out by Goomba Gaming. They did, did pick up the Skyrath Mage as their secondary support and offers a good silence uh, for them as well as some good nuking potential. Also very good at uh, zoning out offlaners. So Skyrath Mage, a hero that wasn't seen a lot uh, like a month ago, but right now he's in the vogue and Skyrath Mage will be the pick. Yeah, his damage increase is insane. That's why he's been picked up recently. I, it's something like 45% bonus magic damage with his E. Yeah, even at level 1, it's 30%, so just like one value point can be so important if you get it on at a key timing. But yeah, it's absolutely insane. If you have like another Magic Nuker along with that Skyrath Mage, so far they don't really have a huge amount of magical damage, but even just the clap coming out from Brewmaster is going to do an obscene amount of damage. Dyer's ban. Yeah, exactly, and Brewmaster does mean a lot of control. He's very viable at the moment, and lots of people have been picking him, so he might be played mid. Uh, it's probably too early to judge that. He's either going to be off lane or mid. Um, but Brewmaster, with his tornado on his uh, Ten seconds to go. Uh, storm spirit, I guess, the storm panda, would mean a pretty easy setup for Skyrim Mage Alt as well. 
Yeah, definitely. Tinker banned out by Osloki Gaming. No big surprises there. Giving away Radiant Tinker is really never a good option. It would change up the lanes for Goomba Gaming a little bit. You'd probably see that Brewmaster either in the safe lane or the off lane, depending on how they want to roll with it. But still, just not wanting to deal with the Tinker can really mess up those five-man pushing lineups. Yeah, we're actually seeing a lot of bans uh, from the heroes that were last game. I don't think Goomba Gaming want to come close to facing the team they're up against last time because it did so good. Um... It's going to surprise me if they don't pick up a Magnus now, actually. But even though he, they don't have anyone to put in power on, uh, he is still a very viable mid for them at the moment. Honestly, I'd say that Darkseer is going to be the pickup for Oslicky Gaming here. I think he offers pretty much what the Magnus did last game, except for he doesn't have the Empower. But without the Ember Spirit, I don't think the Empower is as important. And it also doesn't soak up that mid slot uh, for us Slicky Gaming. So I think picking up the Darkseer here for like a, the vacuum setup into the Static Storm with the Echo Slam on top uh, would be a solid pickup for us Slicky Gaming as well. But that said, their Magnus last game was very good. So still Yeah, good. I was just about to say that the vacuum, like you mentioned, is going to be an easy setup for Earthshaker and Disruptor this time. Uh, last team fight, uh, the last game, sorry. We did see ultimates come out in team fights, but some of them were a bit uncoordinated, and Vacuum would definitely make up for that little flaw they have uh, in their dropping all their ultimates at the same time. Also, another natural mechanism carrier. So if Osloki Gaming do want to go for five-man Dota, that is a good pickup, but they're going to go for the Faceless Void here. He was banned out last game, uh, but this time they'll have it available to them. They don't have the best setup inside the Chronosphere. Uh, although they do have the Static Storm, which if you drop it at the very end of the Chronosphere, kind of works similar to uh, setting up with a Naga Siren, where you just freeze everybody in place and then you'll have the extra lockdown later on. Um, but still, they have plenty of other picks to complement this Faceless Void and put damage into the Chronosphere, and even just as a solo pickup, Faceless Void can still be very scary at interrupting what Goomba Gaming have to offer if he catches uh, three or between, like, yeah, yeah. just a couple yeah. of tiers in the Chronosphere. I think we're going to see a lot more aggressive pushing from OSG this time, especially now that they have the Chronosphere, because it does uh, pause the attack on towers as well. And not only that, if he does pick up a Necronomicon, it does mean they'll have some pretty good control over the enemy towers and pushing, because the Necro Creeps don't get affected by Chronosphere. So. Yeah, well, we'll have to see. Goomba Gaming, this is pretty much where the draft turns one way or another. This is where Goomba Gaming have the decision of how they want to deal with this Faceless Void, and they're going to pick up the Shadow Demon. Now, this is a great support up against the Faceless Void. You can disrupt the Faceless Void, or you can disrupt the people that he's going on defensively to make sure that they don't drop inside the Chronosphere, and it wastes a lot of the Chronos duration if you do that. Also, yet another way that they can amplify the magic damage coming out from Goomba Gaming. If this support duo catches you out alone, gets disruption, in, uh, disruption into Soul Catcher with the Ancient Seal as well as the Skyrath Mage Ultimate on top of you, you're pretty much dead. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, could we possibly be seeing a Marana coming up for Goomba if Oslicky Gaming don't pick her this time. If they don't pick it up, I'd say that that's a wonderful pick for Goomba Gaming. Because then they have the Shadow Demon Disrupt into Marana Arrow into Scar of Ult, which is, that's going to kill anyone. And even early on, you can't really underestimate the damage that comes up from Arcane Bolt, even if it's just Rass. And Oslicky Gaming, they're going to pick up the Wind Ranger here. Now, I really don't like this pickup, to be honest. I think Wind Ranger just feels so... Meh. Um, if you hit the Shackles, she can be wonderful, but still, she doesn't offer as much when she does transition into the later portions of the game. I think Oslicky Gaming pick up the Rana for themselves would have been a better option. Uh, with the Earthshaker, they have decent setup for the Arrow, and also Arrow into Chronosphere is also a decent combo as well. So I think Rana would have served the same purpose as this Wind Ranger would, or will be doing, uh, but just a notch better. And leaving it in the pool for Goomba Gaming to take up is also a bit of a concern. Yeah, I can't really see why they picked up Wind Rager unless that's a comfortable hero they're playing with against the Shadow, De Shadow Demon Disruption clones. But even then, I don't think it's worth uh, wasting such a, a pick on it. I can't really see where that adds up in this lineup. That said, if Wind Ranger does get really good shackles, uh, still can change my mind about the pick on the spot, just depending on how well they execute. But still, leaving up the draft to execution is always... Uh, a little bit iffy. I think the easier to execute draft more than likely has an advantage. Um, but we'll have to see. Also, it sets up the power shot nicely, and if Wind Ranger does opt for a couple points into focus fire, focus firing somebody inside the Chronosphere is always nice. Um, so, I don't know. Could work out for us, Licky Gaming.
But a Lashrak comes out from Goomba. Another hero that combos well with the uh, Shadow Demon. But how are they going to lane this? Is this a mid Skyrath Mage or is this a farming Lashrak? I don't think that was a good pick. At the moment, they're going to have to put Skyrath Mage mid, Brewmaster off lane, and maybe Shadow Demon and Lashrak in a tri lane with a carry. I think they, they would have been a lot better off taking Mirana then, especially considering the amount of um, CC they need at the moment. Lashrak's good with the disruption, but. I mean, uh, he does return a bit of damage for AoE fights as well, I guess, but I'm not sh quite sure why they picked it, unless they have a really strong tri lane in mind. They might Personally, pick Mirana now, so... I really like this Lashrak pick. It pick. works really well with the other heroes that they have, and I think the tri lane is just going to be your Skyth Mage, Shadow Demon, and Lashrak. Uh, whether they put that safe lane or off lane is still up for grabs. We'll have to see. If they're able to put some pressure on this Faceless Void early, that would be wonderful. Also, a Farmless Shrak cannot be underestimated. His ability to take towers very early and pump out just a vast amount of damage in the team fights is pretty crazy. Um, but I think Marana is the safer pickup, to be sure. Yeah, they do have one slot available left, and that means they already have the Initiate off Brewmaster, so we could still be seeing Marana for their last pick if, Oz if Ozlicky don't pick it up now. Ooh, and it's a Bristleback for Ozlicky Gaming. Let's see, he's on the Dire side, and Dire Bristleback is a little bit lackluster. The Dire offlane is definitely a lot harder to deal with, and the Heroes of Kimba Gaming definitely have killing potential up against a Bristleback, especially early on before he gets a lot of points up into the Bristleback passive. Um, I don't know, it does give them a nice frontline tank, however, doesn't synergize very well with the Faceless Void, or really the Wind Ranger for that matter. So I don't know, Bristleback just seems like an interesting pick here that's kind of solid on his own, but it seems like... The synergy really isn't there. There's not a lot that synergizes well with Minus Armor on a Slicky Gaming. The Faces Void, if you do get a lot of stacks on, I guess, but a Meepo pick for Goomba Gaming. Now, this lineup for Goomba Gaming can either snowball incredibly hard or fall flat on its face very quickly. Um, as a Meepo player myself, I really like this because of Meepo's poof ends up doing over 2k damage with the Skyrath uh, damage increase with Ancient Seal. So I'm actually really excited to see this game. I don't think it was a good thing to pick against the Bristleback. He is going to be causing a lot of Quill Spray, and Goomba Gaming already had a lot of magic damage. But not to mention, Soul Catcher does kind of count counter Bristleback's damage. So I do think Goomba Gaming had a really good pick if they can play that Meepo. Yeah, generally you'd say that single target lockdown is your best way to deal with the Meepo, and us Lucky Gaming really don't have a lot of that. That said, they have plenty of lockdown to keep this Meepo in place with the Chronosphere, Echo Slam from the Earthshaker, as well as the um, Bristleback chasing him down and the Windranger Shackle. So Meepo might just have a terrible game if he does get caught out. All five of those Meepos inside the Echo Slam can completely destroy a Meepo. Uh, but that said, I'm very excited for this draft coming out from Goomba. Something a little bit unconventional, but I can definitely see it working in their favor. Well, I'll go ahead and introduce the Radiant team. We're going to have Goomba Gaming playing on the Radiant Chill, taking up that Meepo. We're going to have HWA playing on the Brewmaster. Lashrak going to be taken up by Nier. Looks like he will be supporting Fire on the Shadow Demon. That will leave Exist playing on Skyrath Mage towards the mid lane. I'll let you go ahead and introduce the Dire side. Yeah, sorry about that. So on Dire, we do have the uh, Faceless Void, which is Reebok, Judo on Wind Ranger. We have Bignum on Earthshaker again, and he did play a really good Earthshaker last time. Ink Visitor on Bristleback, and the Disruptor again on Obi-Wan Banana. Um, you know, I was just thinking about it. Meepo actually did kind of counter pick himself in this situation because of the Echo Slam, Faceless Void ult, and Disruptor's ultimate. So he's going to be left useless if they get a good team fight going on. Yeah, I don't know. It's going to be very snowball oriented for Goomba. If they're able to get some good kills early, get this Meepo huge, get an early Aghanim Scepter, maybe even a Blink Dagger, and are able to get those pickoffs and split the map a little bit with this Meepo, um, I think they'll be okay. But that said, this Meepo could just completely fall flat on his face. Yeah, I always love a Meepo pick though, so I'm really interested to see how this goes. Right. Uh, they do have a lot of push power uh, again. Goomba had, did bring a good push lighting up last time, so I think Meepo might be there like a one-man team as far as that's concerned. Yep, I don't know. Chill will find himself a regeneration room down the bottom lane. He was kind of halfway between denying that and picking that one up. Eventually just picks it up for himself. Uh, but... 
Either way, the lanes are going to be a little bit interesting coming out from Goomba. We're going to have Shadow Demon as well as Meepo heading up the bottom lane, and towards the top we're going to have Lashrak as well as Brewmaster. Now this laning situation, I really don't like it for Goomba. I think putting the Shadow Demon and Lashrak together is probably your best bet. There's really no way for Nier to set up a stun in this lane, and I'm not really sure what he's going to be able to do. But yeah, especially against this tri lane coming out from OSG with Bristleback at the core, they need to be careful. I think HWA is just going to have to soak experience, but... Well, they're TPing down to bottom lane. Some action going on to Juno. He's going to be netted up. He throws out the wind run, trying to make a turn on the fire with some traded harass. Now, Big Num's here. He has the Fissure to throw. Where is it going to go? Well, he's not going to throw it just yet. Eventually, he's going to split them beautifully and fire. Looks like he's going to give up this first blood. All he needs is one more auto attack. It's going to be there from Judo. Shadow Demon did not have himself a salve, so wasn't able to stab through that last auto attack. And Judo getting a nice kill there off of some very aggressive play coming out from Goomba. Yeah, it, um, based on what you said a second ago about the lineup, it would have probably been better to have the tri lane top with the Shadow Demon and Leshrac, like you pointed out. Maybe a Scarf with Meepa, I'm not quite sure, and Brewmaster mid. Um, but it does look like they might get a kill at top with that good Leshrac stun, and this does seem like a really good kill with the body blocks, and that is a free kill over to uh, Goomba. Yeah, HWA going to pick that up for himself, and well, with that rotation from the Earthshaker, this tri lane coming out from OSG is a lot less threatening. So Goomba going to capitalize on that and even up the kill score, although First Blood, given the way of the uh, Wind Ranger here, is going to favor them. Uh, Meepo, I don't know, Judo went for a very interesting item choice. What do you feel about Orb of Venom on the uh, Wind Ranger? Um, you know, I don't even know. I can't even begin to think where that came from. It might just be for a kill lane, just for the extra slow, but even then, it's not even much of a slow. It's 4%. 4%. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's going to do anything. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I think that was just a big waste of money. I mean, it might have been a panic buy. He might have been trying to do something with it. I'm not quite sure, but we'll see. I don't know. It could be just that little bit edge that they need, but I think just saving up for Blades of Attack would give you more damage anyway. And working towards that fade, uh, phase boots, Big Num has a Fissure, not going to throw it out, and Chill has managed to find himself level 3. So the double Meepo is there. Although one of them is fairly low, maybe they're able to get a kill here. Let's see, just more harass going the way of Chill, and now Fissure blocks in the Meepo, and Meepo dies here. Nice Fissure coming out from Big Num, and was just hanging around too low there with that one Meepo. Yeah, I'm kind of confused as to why he's keeping his Meepos together and isn't microing one into the forest, because that does mean if Wind Ranger skills shackles, for as long as he's keeping those Meepos together, that's going to be a free kill every single time. Yeah, also, they are on the Radiant side. They have one stack up in that large camp, but still, getting some stacks for your Meepo is wonderful. He's a very good Flash Farmer and can get very fat very quickly if you give him the room. Scarf Mage fell fairly low in the middle lane up against Chomi. Chomi did have a salve, however, after all of that harass, so was able to stay in lane. We haven't really talked about this mid faceless Void, but so far, he's doing fairly well up against Scarf Mage 10-7 and 7, compared to the 8-1, and 1, mostly just due to the base damage discrepancy between these two heroes. And, whoa, we're going to get a kill up in top lane... Oh, Bristleback giving up a kill yet again. Even without the setup, Nier has been able to land some very nice split earth stuns. Yeah, and as far as this uh, Faceless Void mid is concerned, he is maxing backtrack as well, and he's getting pretty lucky with some of them, so that is a big factor into why he's winning lane so much. And not only that, if OSG do get ahead, Meepo, despite how far behind he is, can just farm. Like you said, he's a really good flash farmer. Um, he could just sit back and... Oh, Fissure going to block out Chill with those face boots and Orb of Venom. It looks like Chill's going to die here. He doesn't have a poof. It's coming up a cooldown, but Shackle going to keep him in place. Meepo's going to die yet again. Judo falls low, but in the end, this Meepo has died twice. He's not having a good game at all. I think he just needs to go into full recovery mode. Yeah, well, that Meepo is actually standing still to give away that Shaco, so I'm not quite sure what's going on. He might have panicked, or he might not be as good as he needs to be, given the lineup he's against with this uh, double, shackle, double Shackle Wind Ranger. So it does look like the bottom lane is definitely in favor of OSG at the moment. Yeah, definitely. And if this Meepo does not get the farm that he needs, I'm very scared for Goomba's lineup. That said, like... We've already pointed out he's getting some stacks up. Faceless Void, eating some harass here. He's going to need a concussive shot as well. We do have, I believe, a double damage run Skyrath Mage uh, making up or leading to that harass going the way of the Faceless Void, but in the end, not really going to matter. Uh, but yeah, Shadow Demon at least going to weaken up this stack for the Meepo. He's going to stack it one more time for him. Actually failed there. It's kind of hard to stack that anymore. 
uh, when you are pulling down towards the south. Show me. Going to eat the silence as well as one more arcane bolt. He gets one backtrack on the on and a nice defensive fissure. Going to land from Big Numb and will keep his faceless void safe. And with the bottle, he'll be able to stay in lane for a little bit longer. Also, faceless void has his six. They need to be a little bit careful here. If they try to dive him yet again, he could just drop his ultimate. Yeah, I'm just looking at these stacks now, and I do think that the Shadow Demon's definitely helping out in this lane huge. Oh, and I might have just missed a kill him from top then. It does look like Brewmaster did get a kill on Bristleback again. Bristleback is having a very hard time at this top. He has taken a lot of magic damage from the uh, Thunderclap, and not to mention the crits and the uh, stuns and Diabolic... Uh, what's it called? Diabolic Edict from the uh, Leshrac. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't expecting Brewmaster to die so much, especially without the Brewmaster ultimate use. Just got too low, and in the end, he's given up two kills as well. So still the kill score is even, but I think the Meepo having a bad time early on is worse than having a Bristleback that starts off slow. Yeah, I'm surprised he's not actually maxing Bristleback, given the situation. This might be a really easy kill for the Brewmaster now that he has his ultimate in Fall Mana. Yeah, definitely. He does have um, doesn't have enough for the ultimate as well as the uh, thunderclap. But if he gets like another magic stick charge, he will be able to drop both of them. Uh, he needs pretty much a full mana pool to pull that off. But in mid lane, we have a Corona Sphere going out to exist. There's not a lot of follow up. Fisher is going to come for Big Num to keep him locked in place. And a beautiful block. Silence and Scry's Mage Ultimate is going to come through. Big Num going to walk through that. Show me taking a decent amount of damage. Time lock forward. All they need is one more attack. Will they be able to get? They will. TP back from the Meepo. Is he going to be able to get this kill onto the face of Void? Throws the net. It's going to catch up Big Num instead. He peep, uh, poofs in one of the Meepos. I believe Big Num falling fairly low. Another net going to drop on both of them. He's looking for the other poop, but he's going to be cancelled by a stun. Show me going to get a lucky bash on a chill, but there's no follow up here. Body box from the. Uh, uh, Earthshaker Illusion, but in the end, just going to save the Faceless Void. Yeah, we are actually seeing some amazing fissures from this Earthshaker. This is the second full lane fissure he's done to completely block them off from running away. Yeah, I don't know. Give Big Num his Earthshaker, he plays it very well. I don't know, and they've been first picking it as well, giving a lot of priority to this ES pick. Up in top, we have a little bit of dive. Here comes the Brewmaster Ultimate. He splits off. The Kinetic Field isn't going to do anything to these Brewlings. They are mostly magic immune. And now they're looking for this kill on Ink Visitor. He has a stun to throw from the uh, Brewling coming off of cooldown in one more second. He's not going to throw it just yet, trying to decide who he wants to go on. And here is falling for Lilo. He's trying to chase him around with this Earth Brewling. Will he be able to get it? He's salving up with the Thunderclap. HWA going to be able to secure that kill. Now the stun going the way of Obi-Wan Badon. Guaranteed crit. Secures the double. And now faces Void, looking for this kill on Brewmaster, possibly time walks forward. It's not a very high level time walk, however. And HWA just going to be able to walk that one off after getting two kills in the top lane. And it does look like Meepo got a really easy kill bottom lane. He managed to get the net combo with uh, Shadow Demon, the Disrupt, and um, that was a free kill for them. Yeah, definitely. So, chill. Making a little bit of a comeback. He has a thousand gold after cleaning up some of the stacks as well as getting the kill on the Wind Ranger. I'm not sure what build um, he's going to go for this game. As a Meepo player, what do you think? Uh, I think he needs to pick up an Ogre Club right now and make some good item progression towards the Aghanims to make a comeback. Just for that early strength, he should get the Ogre Club like right now. Uh, I hope he doesn't get a point booster because that doesn't give the stats to his extra Meepo, which he really needs right now. Sounds like a plan. I think that's definitely a solid item pickup. He might be saving for Blink as well. Um, but still, I think he does need to tank up just a tad bit. I think it's safe to say Blink Dagger would be a good item, but not given the situation he's in, he's really far behind. So he needs to start using that gold to get some stats up as fast as possible, and then he can focus on getting the Blink Dagger when he has more farm coming in because of his Ags. Yeah, sounds good, and Shadow Demon going to help him with that a little bit, starting to stack up these large camps a little bit more. Should be able to get the triple stack here. The uh, two camps on the side of the mid lane haven't been stacked, I believe, and indeed they haven't. Just one of the small creeps has been taken, oddly enough. Um... But either way, yeah, so this Meepo, they pressured him early on, but they haven't been able to maintain that pressure onto Chill. He's been able to catch up a little bit, and well, after a couple of good kills up in the top lane as well, coming out from that Brewmaster split, looks like Goomba are not really in a bad position is all uh, at all. Brewmaster seeing the top of the net worth slot is almost going to have those uh, the Blink Dagger finished after uh, finishing off the phase boots, and Meepo's net worth isn't looking too shabby either. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but I do think both the deaths given away by Meepo was his lack of micro. They were both on the second Meepos, and they were both because the Meepo was standing still. However, I do think because of the Shadow Demon doing a great job supporting and stacking, he is making a very good comeback right now. 
And uh, if you get some items, they'll de they definitely have a good chance of coming back into this game a little bit. OSG might be going for their typical like farm loads and to come back and team fight, especially with the Faceless Void. He's a very good hero to make stuff like that happen. Uh, as well as Bristleback top lane, I think he needs to either get some help right now at top lane, or he's just going to keep getting giving away loads of gold. Brewmaster is got his phase boots now, and he's almost got a blink dagger. And as soon as he gets that blink dagger, I am just seeing another dive. I'm just calling it right now. Pretty much. He doesn't have the ultimate for another 67 seconds as of now. Uh, so he might uh, try to rotate once he gets that, but just with the Blink Thunderclap, I think he can go for this kill on Ink Visitor, even under tower. Like, without a huge amount of TP support, this Bristleback is going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, they might just sack him and have him soak experience and try to not get last hits here. Or not, like, try not to get last hits, but try his best not to die, uh, rather. Yeah, but with the uh, buff on Blink Dagger, which reduces the mana cost, it means he can, he does have enough mana to blink in, Thunderclap, and pop an ultimate, so he should probably, uh, Bristleback needs to be really careful about that right now. Yeah, and there's your blink finished up by the uh, Brewmaster at about 9 minutes. Well, Shadow Demon, I believe that's, no, uh, it's only going to be a single pull, he, uh, single stack, he attempted the stack on the small camp as well, uh, but just going to be mistimed a little bit. Either way, it's definitely worth a try. Down in bottom, we have a bit of a group up coming out from OSG with Pignum as well as uh, Obi-Wan Banan on the bottom lane. Backing up Judo, and with this Focus Fire Tier 1 tower, the first tower of the game in bottom, is going to fall in the favor of OSG, so going to get a nice infusion of gold. Unfortunately, Judo didn't get the last hit, but now here comes the Blink onto the Bristleback. Seeing the supports are bottom, he's not doing a huge amount of damage with TP support, as well as no ultimate on HWA. He's not going to be able to do it. Nice visual. We'll lock him in place, and he has a lot of stacks building up onto him in both of the... Um, oh, Echo Slam dropped onto poor Nier here, and he's going to be blown up. As a support Lashrak, he really can't do anything. The Diabolic Edict is going back in. Now the split comes out from the Brewmaster. He missed Micro a little bit and backed off. We'll be able to chase him down. He uses the Wind Walk on the... Uh, Wind Aspect looking for this kill on Ink Fizzer chasing him around. He's going to get the body block. He doesn't even have to throw out the stun. Eventually, will he? Out of the Immolation Aura. Doing a little bit of work on to um, the Bristleback here. Now, Chomi has the ultimate. And that's a very easy kill on HWA. He's blocked by the Fisher, but time walk over it. One more smack of his uh, Mace and Faceless Void going to notch himself a kill on the Brewmaster. And a well needed one at that. Yeah, that Brewmaster just got impatient. He could have just waited 13 seconds for that Leshrac to get better positioned and for his ultimate to come off, and that would have been an easy kill for him. But instead, he decided to go in, and they ended up badly rotating between each other, back and forth, uh, giving away a free kill. OSG, that was well played by them, even though that creep did seem to be against them, uh, blocking the Bristleback there, and I reckon Bristleback would have got away if that creep weren't standing in the way. Yeah, Bristleback used Fog very well in that, uh, juking through the woods, not able to get the boulder toss off by the uh, Earth Panda. I think he should have thrown him up in the air with the Wind Aspect, and then purged him down and then went for the Sun, or maybe just a couple more auto attacks would have been enough if he got good positioning. And, well, while you're chasing around like that, when your ultimate's wearing down, you need to back off with the Earth Panda, so something like that doesn't happen where Chomi just drops an ultimate on you and smacks you with his mace. Um, so in the end, yeah, Brewmaster, just a little bit impatient, and then a very greedy dive down in bottom lane. They're going to be able to clean up this Disruptor. Just absolutely blown up the poof. Uh, Thunderclap, as well as the guaranteed crit, was all they needed. Shadow Demon actually gets the last hit. And we might be looking at a kill up top now. There was a good CC chain onto the Faces Void then, but unless they can get enough damage, he's just going to time warp away, and he might have just got away there. Yep, Arcane Bolt is going to land. They don't have another concussive shot, and Chomi is going to be able to shrug that one off. I'm uh, not sure if he got very good backtrack luck, but even if he didn't, I think he would have been just fine. They just don't have a lot of lockdown out of these two supports outside of the Silence as well as the uh, Earth Splitter, and it just wasn't enough for the Faceless Void with this maxed out backtrack. Yeah, maybe if they'd uh, overlapped the Silence with the Stun a little better, they could have got a little bit more damage off. But like you said, he's, he has a max out backtrack. He, I reckon he was going to get away. Unless he literally failed to backtrack all the hits just then, he would have gotten away anyway. Yeah, definitely. Meepo, chill. He's saved up 2.2k gold, probably looking at that Blink Dagger. Yeah, I don't know. Blink Dagger is still at a good timing. It's going to be at 12 minutes for chill, so I think it can still work out for him. But if he doesn't get kills with this and fails to farm, I don't know. He could be in a lot of trouble this game. Yeah, but if he does get Blink Dagger, we're looking at him blinking on some very, like, lockdown heroes compared to him. If he blinks on Bristleback, because the back it will live for a long whoa, time. Whoa, whoa. Wind Ranger just picked up a Midas, a very weird build coming out from Judo. Orb of Venom phase into Midas, something I've never seen from a Wind Ranger, but I don't know. It looks like OSG are just going to back this off and play it for the late game. Faceless Void also working towards a late Midas. 
Ink Visitor might be in a little bit of trouble here in the middle lane, Skyrath Mages. They're looking for the concussive shot, possibly, but Ink Visitor just going to be soaking some experience uh, towards the bottom side of that tier one. Yeah, we might be seeing a carry, a uh, wind ranger transition into a carry, and it does look like Gumbo are getting really aggressive over this tier one. Oh, but Blink Ford coming out from HWA, and now they get to slow on Ink Visitor, but nice Chronosphere going to delay things. Coming out from the Faceless Void, he's going to be throwing up the air, and now a power shot. They're going to be able to get this kill onto the Skyrath Mage. He's going to buy back instantly. He still has his ultimate. Just look at the damage coming out. They're going to drop Skyrath Mage ultimate. It really doesn't do all that much. However, the Static Storm is being very annoying and zoning out a lot of these heroes. Blink Ford by the Brewmaster. He's looking for this kill. Can he get anyone? One more crit on the Brewmaster. will be able to get it, but H. WA might be in a little bit of trouble. They silence it me. Now another Fissure coming out from Big Dumb. They're going to lose their Brewmaster as well. And all they got in exchange for that was the, um, excuse me, Bristleback. He's looking for his kill on Disruptor. Looks like Disruptor is dead with Shadow Poison as well as the Arcane Bolt. Obi-Wan Banan's going to die, but that cost him a buyback on the Shadow, or Sky with Mage. He's going to silence up Big Dumb. They can't get the stun off. And now Big Dumb might be in a little bit of trouble. They're looking for this lockdown. Oh, uh, he's going to throw the Fissure. It blocks exist away, and he should be able to make it out alive. So in the end, that was. A three for two with a buyback on the side of Goomba, so effectively, yeah, yeah, three and a buyback for two. Yeah, and it looks like Meepo's trying to push this bomb tower with all his Meepo's, but Bristleback just TP'd in. He might be getting away, considering that OSG are pretty much always dead, uh, dead at the moment and just coming back from base. But there is a Faceless Void here, and he missed jumps with his... Oh, but the uh, Fissure... They're going to glimpse back the low Meepo, and Meepo's very dead. He did opt to buy the Ogre Club before he died now has the point booster as well so he's going to be rushing towards that agonim scepter so just deciding if he wanted to blink and decided to farm it passively after that team fight loss but if he was there there was so many heroes on the side of osg that were so low they just couldn't seal the deal on any of them and if meepo poofed in with one of his meepos tp to the tier one tower and got a poof that would have been some easy kills i don't know i think yeah. i think it would have been all right if meepo had gotten that tower and then gotten away but instead of diving past it uh, Brewmaster did just take mid tower as well, so there is a lot of money coming in for Goomba right now, but I don't think the Meepo trading for his tower was really worth it. Yeah, I don't know. In the end, Goomba do pick up two tier ones across the map, so the map control is in their favor. The heal score is evened up, and well, it's still anybody's game, but I don't know. I'm not sure Goomba can take this light up against OSG. They have the faces void as well as the Wind Ranger, who's going to be going into carry and late game Meepo. He's Definitely a great late game hero, but against the lockdown that OSG have in the AoE with the Earthshaker Ultimate Disruptor as well as Faceless Void Ultis, it's going to be a scary game to be a Meepo. Meep uh, Big Dumb is going to run into Exist. They silence up, and now the Sky with Mage Ultimate Earthshaker. He stick charges up, and he's surviving for now. They shackle Exist up to that creep, and now they drop Exist, and now Fire is going to be stunned by the Earthshaker. He's very low, but the Brewmaster split coming out there looking for this kill onto Obi Wan, but not jumping from the face of Void. Drops the Chrono onto two. He's focusing on Fire. He'll be able to get that one as well. Power shut set, set up onto Cho. They're trying to focus down Cho me inside the Chronosphere, but Chill not going to die. But the Latrak not going to be so lucky with that Focus Fire to secure things. They throw the Winter Energy in the air yet again, but now HWA in a bit of a sticky situation. He He's fissured up, and now the follow-up sent from Enchant Totem. He's looking for the um, clap, but he's not going to find it. Shackled to the tree. HWA going to fall. Four heroes, or yeah, four heroes dead in the side of Goomba. All they lost was the disruptor on OSG, and yet another good team fight for OSG. Yeah, these team fight builds are definitely coming in favor of OSG. That was a really good team fight because they only swatched the, uh, swapped the disruptor. It was really good that Earthshaker got away by popping that wand. Otherwise, he would have died to the Skyrafault. And he does still have his ultimate up as well, so if he decides to go back, he can come back and fight again. And Earthshaker, he is 5-0 and 8. He's going to have a very fast blink dagger, especially considering they went for Tranquil Soul Ring first. I don't know, this Earthshaker is going to have a huge impact this game, and OSG, last game, they started out pretty slow, and they had to turtle to come back into it, but this game, they're starting out a little ahead, and they're fighting with Midas's and winning. As this keeps on going later, OSG's advantage is just going to get even more huge. This Meepo is still scrambling to get up to a point where he can actually fight. He's going to have the Agnum Scepter soon, which I guess is nice, but at about um, 17 minutes in, I guess we should look at the graphs. We're going to have gold and just look at for that last team fight. It's about a 5k gold advantage towards OSG, and experience is similar at about uh, nearing 6k. Yeah, Meepo did just pick up his Agnum, so if he, if he decides to start flash farming this forest, he might have Blink Dagger by 21 minutes-ish, uh, considering there are stacked camps in his forest as well, which is really good for him. If they do that, they can start picking some people off. Obviously, he doesn't want to jump into a big team fight, otherwise the Earthshaker is just going to pop Echo Slam, we're going to see a Chronosphere, and we're going to see the uh, Disruptor Stag Storm, which would definitely not be good for him. But I reckon he could probably get his Blink Dagger really soon right now, and maybe make a bit of a turn. 
Smoke up from Bignum. He has that Blink Dagger. Let's see if they'll be able to get a pick off, but they might just be smoking in the Roshan pit. Skyrath Mage sent some illusions into the pit, but it looks like it's just a solo smoke onto Bignum all said and done. So just looking for that first Blink Dagger initiation, which should catch Goomba off guard. Having an Earthshaker Blink Dagger at 18 minutes in is quite impressive. Yeah, that means they're probably going to start taking some team fights now that Earthshaker has initiate. Oh, he's like going he's... to find out fire. He misses the enchant totem, but lands the fissure. It's going to block him on the wrong side, but I think uh, he'll be able to go down to the low ground. So it looks like Chow Team is going to be fine. Obi Wan Banan counts to four and glimpses him back into the uh, rest of the team, and fire is going to be the cost of that smoke. So in the end, it's going to be worthwhile. Uh, 100 gold for a pickoff on the Shadow Demon. Uh, it's going to work out for them, and now the Tier 1 tower in the mid lane is also going to be under some heavy pressure. But that said, HWA and company were able to take the Tier 1 tower top. Yeah, there were no ultimates used for OSG then, so I think they're going to safely take this T1 unless Scarf decides to try and poke him back with his ultimate. And it does look like Meepo's getting Meepo. caught off. Yeah, he's going to be stunned. Oh, it barely clipped wow. him as he was going top. They drop a Chronosphere in mid to delay things. They glimpse back Lashrak up towards the top lane. Now Bristleback is trying to rotate in. HWA has his ultimate. He's going to silence up to Bristleback. And just look at that Scar's Mage ultimate damage. They silence everybody up in Bristleback. Or Brewmaster, excuse me, can't get off his ultimate. Now he's locked in. And they're going to be able to get him with a Lucky Bash coming up from Chomi. Now Shadow Demon in a lot of trouble. Fisher coming up from the Earthshaker. They're going to be able to clean up three kills yet again. Maybe getting the Meepo kill would have been better for them in the end, but I don't know. Chill getting away is good for Goomba, but still so much gold going the way of OSG, and now Roshan is fairly open to them. Yeah, OSG decided to pick up the mech on the Bristleback as well, which I think is an extremely cost-effective item to pick up on him, considering he was so far behind, because now he benefits his team really well. They actually uh, lived then because he popped his mech, so it's definitely starting to pay off, and he's starting to dish out a bit more damage now with his levels as well. Yeah, just look at this Roshan fall, though. With the Minus Armor coming out from the uh, Nasal Goo, as well as the Focus Fire, and just the right-click damage from all of these heroes. They take it very quickly. There's just nothing that Goomba can do. They try to push out top a little bit. Meepo farms up the jungle as well, and does have that Blink Dagger before you anticipated, about 20 minutes. Uh, so, Chill looking good as far as farm is concerned, but I'm not sure he's really going to be able to do enough with this. Oh, yeah, we just see it time and time again. Meepo, he either doesn't join fights, or he just gets locked down too much. Yeah, we need to start seeing some really smart play from this Meepo now. Probably a lot of split pushing. Uh, Judo gets stunned, and now the Nets are coming out from Chill with those four Meepos. This should be a fairly easy kill on the Wind Ranger. Well, she's one running away, now slowed down, and eventually will fall. So getting picked off here. A nice kill going the way of them, but now the time lock forward by the uh, Faceless Void, and he's going to be able to chrono up Chill. They throw a net to delay things for now. Now a Fissure going to lock him down as well, but... Chill, he's trying to rotate in. Echo Slam dropped on all of those Meepos, and look at the damage. But still, they're falling too low, and OSG have overextended here. They're going to lose three heroes on this top lane. Static Storm will catch out. Chill, will they be able to get this Meepo even? Looks like they might be able to. He's silenced up and now locked in place. They get Ink Fister slowed down, and now another net thrown out by the Meepo. A third net uh, to keep him there, and Poof's going towards the north, and well, Chill, trying to get these Meepos out alive. He's going to be able to Poof away one. Chill, he's getting snotted up by this Bristleback. Coming off a cooldown, he needs one more attack. Not going to get it, and Chill, he's my Micro was not great early on, but he's coming up for it now. And now Ink Visitor, the sun's going to be off the mark, but the net is not going to be so. And Ink Visitor looks like they're going to be able to chase him down. They throw up him in the air to reposition, now purge him down with the Wind Panda. And now Ink Visitor is going to be comboed down, it seems. Well, will they be able to get him? He's very tanky, and he might be able to turn on Lushrak. Lushrak's just going to back off, and eventually, will they be able to get this? He's turning, and he'll be able to get Lushrak. Bristleback, just so darn tanky. Eventually, he will tick down, loses the Aegis, but now he's coming back with a Vengeance. Judo going to get some nice damage off onto Fire. Well, I think that's going to be the end of it. Power shot. Ooh. Yep, I think that's it. Uh, I think that was a really well-played fight from Meepo, actually. He did a bit, uh, a few things rough. And it was pretty tense, but he did pull back his low HP Meepo at the right time. He didn't send it all the way back to base, but he pulled it back, which caused the Earthshaker and I think it was Faceless Void to try and chase him and kill them, which definitely baited him into the rest of the fight. So as far as that was concerned, and the uh, the poofs out, that was really, really well played. Yeah, well, we're going to miss an Earthshaker kill in the mid lane chill, putting that Blink Dagger to good use too fast to cast. There's so much damage coming out from the poofs, and well, this Meepo, he had a shaky start early, but now he's coming online, and coming online in a big way, sitting at... About even farm with this Faceless Void, and well, 2k of that gold on Faceless Void is committed to that um, Midas, and he also has an Aghanim Scepter, so the damage from Void isn't really there. Uh, so for now, Meepo's the king of the house, and I think Goomba, after that last teamfight, had picked up a little bit of much-needed momentum. Also, with an Aghanim Scepter on Brewmaster, I think these next couple of fights are going to be looking good for them.
Yeah, I mean, Meepo went from fourth place net worth to literally first in the matter of two minutes, three minutes, just because that team fight in this farm he's getting now. Yep, Obi Wan Banan drops a ward. He spots that the Shadow Demon's Wolves of the Shrak, and it looks like he's just going to back off, but Meepo's coming in as well. This could be huge for them. They're going to throw a purge. Well, Meepo is dropping one in. They jump forward with Chomi. He's not going to throw out the ultimate. And now they're going to drop up fire before this fight begins. Chili poofs Meepo's and just look at the damage towards the disruptor, but he's caught in a static storm. And it looks like he's going to lose his Meepo for that pickoff on the Shadow Demon, or excuse me, Disruptor. And in the end, two for one trade time. Walk forward. And now he catches the Chronosphere on Exist. He gets one Bashful Shrak Sun, going to be nicely juked by Chomi. Follow up Shackle, going to latch to the tree. And Exist is going to fall. Now blink forward from Bignum, going to get a double fissure. HWA going to be the target choice. They're going to commit the Echo Slime. He gets it split off. And it looks like it's retreat time for OSG, at least for now. They're going to drop the clap. With that Aghanim Scepter, he's doing a decent amount of damage, but they're just focused in on these Brulings. The Wind One's going to die, and now the Earth One's trying to get away, but a nice bash coming up from Chomi. They're time walking forward. They're looking for this kill. They're stunned up by the Lestrak. They only need a little bit more, and it looks like Brewmaster, is he going to get back? He will. And now Blink Away, Disruption will keep him alive for now. Fissure stun will go the way of the Shadow Demon, but it looks like they're just going to have to back off. The Shadow Poison is starting to stack up, and I think OSG should just be happy with what they got. Yeah, that fight definitely brought him back into the game it stopped Meepo from snowballing so hard by negating some of the damage he, uh, gold he done um, as for how that fight went I mean uh, given the circumstances of how it was how it initiated I think that definitely went in favor of OSG considering they didn't lose anyone I think they can only be satisfied with that not to mention Chronosphere wasn't popped Chronosphere was popped to get the uh, kill on Skyrath Mage in the end but oh. with Aghanim Scepter it's already back on uh, line oh. with that 60 second cooldown um, ah, I see yeah, yeah. And Faceless Void also finds himself a double damage rune, so if he uh, uses that to get a kill, that could be important in the next team fight. Uh, but in the end, yeah, OSG. They got some kills. Also, Brewmaster Split was used and didn't get any uh, pickoffs with that. In fact, dropped fairly uh, low during the split, and it's getting that time where Brewmaster Split just isn't all that effective anymore. Yeah, well, I mean, he can use it to control really well, and it does look like Meepo is going to be building a Scythe of the Vice, so they're going to have a lot of control over the AoE that the OSG are doing. So if they get the right amount of CC off with the uh, Storm Spirit from Brewmaster and the Scythe and Disrupt, they're definitely going to take fights in favor of themselves and stop all that AoE coming out from OSG. But I think now we're just going to see a similar playstyle from OSG as what we saw last game, where... They realize they're starting to lose some fights, so they're just going to sit back, get their carry farm, and take some fights late game. Yeah, definitely, and I think they can do that. With the double Midas coming out from them, I believe there's only two in this game, and it is the case. One on Judo as well as one on Chomi. And while speaking of Judo, he has an Orchid as well, and this is going to be very important in the next couple of fights for the Brewmaster. He went for the Agnum Scepter, so BKB going to be a long ways away for this Brewmaster, and he's probably not going to be able to get his ultimate off as easily in these next couple of engagements. If they had the Orchid there when they were fighting... Uh, back behind the woods here. They would have been able to get that kill on the Brewmaster, but Goomba not, or trying to make sure that uh, OSG don't uh, get the offensive off in this next couple of team fights and won't fight on their own terms. They're going to push mid. Yeah, Meepo's doing a really good job split pushing the top. Uh, he was he did push out mid, and now his team's taken over, and he's transitioned to top. So it looks like they're probably going to trade their tier 2, and oh, Meepo oh, actually disengages. Chomi looking for Chronosphere. Possibly they're going to oh, silence up Chomi, and now Exist is one in a little bit of trouble. He's going to be mecked up by his team and try to TP out. Will be able to make it. No first hit bash coming up from Chomi, but he almost died just as straight up damage. Now they get the um, Orchid onto the Brewmaster. He'll be able to get the split off, but now the Pandas are glimpsed back to that position. It looks like they'll be able to clean up and with the Chronosphere committed a beautiful chrono it looks like it did catch out uh, big in the end but it was a well positioned one by chomi and with the agonim scepter not really going to be the biggest deal of having that on cooldown and getting the pickoff on the uh, the, uh brewmaster excuse me definitely worth it but that said chill was able to get a tier two tower on top will you be able to get all these meepos out shackle not going glatch but he's silenced up can't poof out of there now the echo slam committed chill he's trying to get out of there but he's going to die the orchid tick was enough to get that kill and well, yeah, they got the tier two tower, but definitely not worth it. I think his issue there was his tabbing on his poofs. He tabbed three of them out, and then the last one didn't poof out, even though it could have. And if he'd gotten away with that tower, it would definitely been a worthwhile trade for Goomba. But uh, it's a bit of a shame that he didn't get away, and he kind of got a slow cast on that poof. Yeah, well, one of the advantages of having a Meepo is that reduced uh, cooldown timer, and he will be back in 20 seconds. So they should be able to defend high ground at the very least. And we'll be back before we have any huge 5-on-5 five -five engagements, I'd assume. Um, but yeah, still. Meepo getting yeah. cut out there is really bad for Goomba. And they're also going to take a little bit of this uh, 
or deal a little bit of economic damage by taking this ancient stack that was building up on Goomba's side as well. Yeah, they did ping both ancient stacks as well as the Envy's Rune, so it looks like they're just going to sit back and take a bit of a farm right now. Uh, I don't think they want to fight, especially with that Meepo on the high ground, and Brumessa might have a might have his ultimate up soon. Yeah, only 28 seconds. So it looks like they're just going to stick back and farm and they might transition down mid to uh, push that tier 2. Yeah, Tutu Tower and bottom is already at about a uh, third HP or so. And they should be able to take that fairly quickly. Meepo does have two of his Meepos in the mid lane, two of them in the um, bottom lane as well as one pushing out top. Eventually he is going to commit more towards the top lane. He's just going to leave one sitting around here. OSG, their face is void, played by Chomi. He's been doing a good job getting some nice Chronospheres, and he's going to build into the BKB next. Uh, so not going to be controlled up by the Brewmaster inside the Chronosphere, and, well, for now, he's not doing a huge amount of damage in these team fights. but once he does get one big damage item, it's really scary for Goomba, and while now he's looking for a Chronosphere, he's going to drop it solo on the little track. He did get the ultimate off in defensive disruption, we'll keep him alive for now. They're going to back off, Bingham looking for the stun, going to land on near. Power shot, a long range artillery going to claim that kill. There is a Brewmaster split coming up, mechanism to heal through a little bit of that damage. The BKP coming up from Chomi, he's trying to focus down these Brewlings, just not doing enough damage. And that BKP charge is a 10 second one, they just need to back off. They're going to get the fire pen as well as the uh, Earth one, and now Earth one is being stunned up. They're going to clean up the Earthshaker during his ultimate, and well... That BKB charge, definitely worth it. Now fire, time walk forward by Chomi. They shouldn't be able to get that kill. Yeah, Brewmaster did pick up a pipe just before that fight, and it did negate most of the magic damage, and it does now mean he's going to take a lot less damage from uh, all the Sky from Meepo burst, so he's probably going to be in those fights a lot longer to control it a little bit. Looks like Meepo's going to transition top, though I don't think he should stay there. He should probably get out, considering OSG are just going to walk up there now, and that means his Meepo might get caught off by this Windrunner, who oh, gets a perfect chill. Shackle. Yeah, Shackled, he has the Orchid, and now the Chronosphere. Not even the Chrono, it's still on cooldown for a little bit longer, and Chill's just going to fall. The Orchid Tick does enough damage yet again, and Meepo getting caught out is terrible. He, that's two times he's been caught out on top, and he's just pushing too aggressively. He leaves one Meepo there when he just needs to pull all five back. Yeah, that, I was good. that's exactly what's going wrong here. Uh, just what you said, he shouldn't be extending for so long over so far on that lane. It was pretty obvious that you, you can't see any of OSG on their side of the map, so they're obviously going to transition top. And it looks like they are just going to check Roshan and swap down bottom again. It is a very long Roshan timer, and they don't really have anything to leave in the pit to keep it scouted up, but they can throw a power shot after pushing down bottom a little bit. And, well, at the very latest, it... Yeah, that's almost a max Roshan timer. Actually, just a couple seconds shy of that full 11 minute respawn. Uh, but either way, they should be able to push down this bottom tier 2 and then rotate in the Roshan pit. I don't think there's really much that Goomba are going to be able to do. And just look at that Earthshaker. He smacks it with one auto attack behind the creep wave. It was already so low that one enchant totem did enough damage. And, well, Roshan's back up and they should be able to take it. Yeah, if OSG take this fight and uh, take the Roshan, sorry, and put it on Faces Void, I think they're definitely going to be able to push a Rax with it. Uh, they have a really strong team fight and have made a pretty good comeback as far as items are concerned. Well, they're going to catch up the Shadow Demon as well before this fight. That secures Roshan. No way that Goomba can really defend against this. I don't know, we might have ugh, Aegis Steel attempt from Chill, but I highly doubt it. I think they just have to give it up. And well, OSG not even going to stop. I don't think they need the Aegis on Chomi, to be honest. He's just so tanky. He's maxed out backtrack, has the BKB as well as Aghanim Scepter. And there's just not a lot that Goomba can do to get him dead, especially if he catches out one or two of them in the Chronosphere. Yeah, I mean, uh, earlier you asked why Windranger got Midas as well, and it seems like it's definitely starting to pay off. She is 8 to 9 as far as ratio is concerned, and she's dishing out a lot of damage, so Midas is definitely starting to pay off now that she has a Maelstrom, Ags, and... Uh, oh, we have a jump in from the Brewmaster, but it's going to be silenced up, and now the Orchid dropped on it as well. They're going to glimpse him back a little bit of miscommunication, possibly from the Disruptor, but they're going to drop the Echo Slam and blow up the Brewmaster before he gets his ultimate off. He's going to be forced to buy back. Chomi's in there very deep, has the BKB, annoy uh, avoiding a lot of that damage. Brewmaster, he finally gets the split off trying to focus down ink visitor they slow down show me with the uh, concussive shot but now they're looking for more that he hasn't used the wind run on the panda now he has he throws up the bristle back in the air trying to delay things for now scarlet mage ultimate being split through two heroes they're falling low on show as well as judo they're netted together and now ink visitor looks like he's going to die but with that pipe he's just so darn tanky they won't be able to get him and now looks like they're going to lose the meepo possibly fisher going to catch out all five of the meepo links and now one more bash from uh faceless void he'll be able to get him scarlet mage trying to focus down the uh void but in the end he's going to die as well buyback for Meepo. It feels like this is the last fight for Goomba. Desperation move by them. Fire throws the disruption, but it's not going to matter. Judo does too much damage with the auto attack, and I don't think Meepo can defend this alone. It looks like that's a barracks down, if not game. Yeah, he has Chronosphere back up now, so it looks like they're 
probably going to take barracks and win this. Uh, I don't think Gumba should have chased them then. Uh, OSG had a really disengaged really well with everyone focusing on Bristleback, which gave them time to reconfigure themselves and go back into the fight. Uh, they wasted Brewbacks, uh, Brewmasters uh, buyback, sorry. Uh, and this looks like it's going to be an uncontested barracks right now. Yeah, nothing Meepo can do. And with that, OSG can just back off, get the Roshan, and rinse and repeat, go down mid. There's really nothing stopping them. And Faceless Void, he's going to have a damage item in this next fight. Like, it's going to be huge. Meepo does get a pick off on the Disruptor, didn't actually catch that. He was silenced up with the Disruptor ult. If you're going to die there, it's probably better just to use it. Uh, rather safe than sorry, so he doesn't pick off anybody else. But now Roshan being pinged out by the Earthshaker, looks like they're just going to be able to take this. Not really a way that Goomba can defend against this. Judo has the uh, Focus Fire ready with that Aghanim Scepter buff as well. And he's going to be hitting hard, working presumably towards an MKB. Maybe even a Daedalus. Yeah, I mean, the only thing, reason I can see Goomba coming back from this is if my, uh, Meepo starts playing a lot better than he already has and starts split pushing and getting away with it as opposed to leaving his Meepos behind. If he does that, they might be able to get some of that map control back. Well, Chill does have the Scythe device, so the hope for a huge Scythe is there. Chronosphere dropped in the pit to secure the Roshan. Here comes a Brewmaster trying to get the initiation off. He finds Ink Visitor, but I don't know, those Brewlings just don't do enough, even when Bristleback's face towards them. Scythe is finished by the uh, Meepo and... Well, it looks like this is going to be disengaged. Tomi falling fairly low. He has the Aegis, so even if he dies, it's not the biggest deal. He's going to fight up against these Brewlings. He will come back, and now the Echo Slam coming out from Big Num. It's going to be huge. Unscribed uh, Mage. Chill is bringing all of his Meepos after the Echo Slam. He will be able to get this Earthshaker, it seems. Four step away. Eventually, he will die. We're focusing on Chill's Meepos, and Chill, is he going to fall? He's trying to micro that one away. All they need is one more object. They're going to get a Bristle back. It's the last hit, I believe, with them. Um, the Quills and now Fire going to fall as well. Four heroes dead. They don't have buyback on any of them except for the Lushrak. But what is that going to matter? They're trying to focus down Watt after he brings brings back, um, or gets back to himself. Pause from the game. <laughs> okay, well that was a cheeky pause, but in the end he's going to die. This might be a GG. Uh, uh yeah. yeah. GG called up by near. That was a really good game. OSG did a really good job with that AoE coming back in the late game again. Yeah, definitely. I've been fairly impressed by OSG in these two games. I think... Yeah, pretty much whoever won that first game since it went so long and is going to be so taxing on you when you lose a game like that where you just get split pushed to death, where you have an obvious advantage early on, you're just not able to seal the deal. Uh, but in the end, it's going to be a 2-0 for OSG, but Goomba definitely showed that they have fighting potential and put up two good games in the end. So thank yeah. you for casting with me, Glenn. It's uh, been a pleasure. And um, where can they find you? Uh, well, I mean, my Twitter is at Glenn Sarge, and my Twitch account is slash Glenlol, so... Sweet. Well, uh, as far as the Hefla TV crew, you can find us on Hefla TV 1 as well as Hefla TV 2 and Heflamoak for English casting. And if you do speak German, uh, they do cover events in German on Hefla TV 3 as well as Hefla TV 4. Um, you can find us on Facebook as well as Twitter at uh, Hefla TV. And on the uh, YouTube, you can find all of the VODs at Twitch or on YouTube slash Heflamoak. Uh, so that'll be it, I believe, for Hefla TV 1 today. Thank you for tuning in. I'll go ahead and run some ads, play some music. Um, while we're winding down the stream. So thank you for watching. That'll be it. And yep.